Jonathan Katz, the reporter who unraveled Senator Britt's story on TikTok, by the way. TikTok has good things. Joins me now. He's reported extensively on migration and conflict around the world. I suspect that's why he knew this something was up here. He was the former bureau chief for the Associated Press in Haiti, and he's the author of two books, The Big Truck That Went By, How the World Came to Save Haiti and Left Behind a Disaster, and Gangsters of Capitalism, Smedley Butler, The Marines, and The Making and Breaking of America's Empire. So when I was watching your TikTok video, I thought to myself, how did he figure this out? So walk through with us. I mean, you've covered immigration and migration for years. That may be a core part of the answer here. But how, when you were watching that, did something not feel right to you? Something just seemed off about it. I mean, maybe it's because I've been covering this stuff for so many years that these things kind of operate on a more instinctive level. But I think part of it was that she was, she was giving very specific, very lurid details about part of the story, but leaving the most important parts of the story mm. extremely vague. There's no information about where this happened, what the name of the woman was, what country it happened mm -hmm. in, when it happened. I was also wondering, well, the first thing I was wondering was like, well, what happened to the woman after this? Mm -hmm. Did she get asylum? Sounds like a good asylum case. Like, is this somebody who like is now living in the United States? The like, case for in some ways, not exactly. that that was her intention. Exactly. But... So like, what's, what's going on here? And yeah, and then I just started Googling. You said this in your video, I believe, but you you, you did contact her, of course, yeah. and her, or her team, I should say. And what was that back and forth like oh, about the details here? There was none. They didn't respond no, at all. No, they didn't respond at all. No, I was, it was just me. It was just me and Google and press releases that they had, that they and, and the other senators who she had traveled to the border with had put out. So it was, the information was out there. Just somebody had to go look for it. I will admit, as much as it's disappointing, distressing, all of the things that she was so misleading, it is a bit painful to watch her try to unravel from it. Yes. Did you, watching that Fox News interview, she, she seems to be implying that she wasn't trying to say this had anything to do with President Biden's border policy. I mean, do you buy that? No. I mean, it's she makes a sandwich with uh, a, a filling that I don't think I'm supposed to say on TV, right? It was like, she, she starts off by saying this is President Biden's border policy. Then she puts in the, the anecdote, which she takes without permission and uh, apparently mm. to the chagrin of, of the woman who she took it from. And by the way, this is also something, as somebody who's reported from a lot of mm -hmm. countries in crisis, I've done a lot of reporting from developing countries, from the global south. I'm very familiar with the dynamic of people coming from the United States, from richer countries, from, from you know, elite classes, and taking somebody's story and then using it mm. to aggrandize themselves. That might have been part of what got my attention, maybe at some level. And then she ends it by bringing it back to... President Biden's border policy. So, yeah, I mean, her her spokesman said to other people, he didn't respond to me, but he said to other people that the story was 100% correct. Mm. And maybe he meant, like, on the level of individual sentences. Like, if you mm -hmm. broke, broke down each individual clause, like, maybe each individual clause had some nugget mm. of truth in it, but put together as a story. And then when she said, in the conditional... We, we would be horrified if these things happened in a third world country, using an archaic term, and, you know, but this is the United States. I mean, that's, I don't know how you get away from, she's very clearly beyond implying. She's just saying straight out that That it it's happened. true. I mean, I'm shocked they didn't contact the woman. I've been involved in a lot of speeches where you're talking about a lot of individuals. We only have about a minute left, and I really should talk to you about this for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But what is the thing? You've been covering immigration and migration. It's become so politicized. Yeah. What is the one thing that people say or people speculate about this issue that you just drives you crazy because it's so wrong? I think the biggest thing is that the, the, the victims of the dysfunction, of the backlog, of closing ports of entry, of forcing people to go through smuggling routes are immigrants, they're migrants. Those are the people who are suffering. Mm -hmm. And you know the way that it's talked about in Washington, the way that Republicans talk about it, the way a lot of liberals talk about mm -hmm. it even, is that the, re the ultimate victims are the American people, that it's your children, Mr. and Mrs. America, who these immigrants are coming for, that there's an invasion. And it's, that's just a, it's just a perversion. The people who are suffering are people who are fleeing the global south, who are fleeing crises, who are fleeing global warming, who are trying to make better lives for themselves and for their families. And they are being demonized and they are being weaponized in our politics here. And it hurts them and it hurts everybody. Such an important point. I really appreciate you, Jonathan Katz, doing the TikTok. Thank you for your time and all of your incredible reporting.